<clears throat> All right. Uh, So hi everyone, welcome to the community meeting. Appreciate your time. So, you know, we just had a big release on Harbor 2.0. Um, I think people are trying it out. Or are you seeing a lot of feedback in the GitHub comment section or issues? And you know, on the previous calls, we had gone through some of the specs for the features that we're gonna be working on for the 2.1 release. Um, We've gone over non-blocking, garbage collection, proxy cache. Um, the issue we had talked about with, you know, creating some sort of a service account for image scanners. So we don't really have any demos lined up for today. I, I contacted a few people. Um, and basically, yeah, there are just a couple of issues that I want to discuss and then we can go from there. And uh, by the way, the Harbor team has been working on a book for on Harbor. So it's uh, we're working on the on the Chinese version first, and it's with a publishing house that's very well respected in China and has a lot of reach in the open source community. So I think it's a great way to you know collect and um, formalize a lot of the stuff in our GitHub repos. You know, documentation, things in the blog, things that aren't supposed to go into GitHub, uh, things on the website. So uh, I'll leave five to 10 minutes uh, for Henry to share the progress on that towards the end. So with that said, here's the issues. <clears throat> Let me share my screen. Everyone wants to see my screen? Yep. So I basically went through the issues that are open right now, and I collected a few on this, a few issues that I thought were interesting that we could discuss. So if there are no objections, we can just sort of go through these. <clears throat> so the first one is, uh, you know, we talked about this in the previous call. We want to enable a special class of robot accounts, we might call these service accounts or something else that can be used by scanners like Aqua Security, CSP, you know, there's a special class of scanners that can't leverage the current robot accounts. So uh, I just wanted to update everyone on the progress here. Basically, we had to work with Daniel Packick from Aqua Security and you know, so we will create a solution around a special class of robot accounts with pull permissions, um, be able to list the repositories and uh, scope to the system level so they have access to all the projects in Harbor. So this will be created possibly um, within the interrogation service or maybe under the, the system administration tab, only accessible to system admins. So we had we had thought about possibly, you know, uh, re-architecting the, the current robot accounts for its purpose, but it's um, it's much larger body of work that we have to think about. So we're using um, JWTs as a, as a token backend. We might look into something else. It's more dynamic. So this is basically just a solution to hold us over until we can you know, work on something that's more sustainable for long term. So uh, is that pretty accurate, Daniel? Do you want to add something to that? Yes, I think it covered all what we discussed so far. So the next step, uh, I believe, is uh, RFC, and then we could start coding. And I'm wondering which release we could target with this one potentially. Um, I think we were thinking about 2.1. So okay. 2.1 is uh, we have a revised timeline of 
mid August. Mid August, yeah, mid August for for an RC build. So right before KubeCon Europe. Yeah, and we'll be definitely be looking for some of your help as well here, Daniel, to help us kind of drive some of this. But I think that you know, with a two two and a half two month release, like for development only, right? We'll have about two months. It should be doable. Uh, I, you know, uh, Alex and you can work on which components you might be able to work on, and and so. But I think it's doable. Like I mean, it's it's a high priority item. It's important to you. It's important to us. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh... Okay. Yeah. So we can chat offline. Um, I'll I'll draw up a simple PRD. We can go from there. So um, that's the first issue I want to talk about. The second one is so you know we're we came across this several times where when you when you do an image scan you get a severity uh, of unknown and right now these are being treated as the most critical vulnerabilities. So. Is blocking holes uh, across the board, right? So whatever security or whatever se severity you've configured in your deployment policy, if there's any unknown, it's blocking the image pool completely. So it's just treating it as critical, or maybe even something higher than critical. And you know, my first reaction was that it doesn't really make sense, or at least. You know, if that's the behavior we want to go with, then we should change the word unknown to something else. Um, so I think they should be treated as, I mean, I think they're closer to being the least severe as opposed to most severe, right? So unknown feels to me like the scanner is unable to identify the CV or assess the risk of the CV properly. So I also want to get your thoughts on that as well, Daniel. Yeah, I can comment on that because we discussed it with uh, Steven Zoe yesterday on, on Slack. And this is, uh, I started thinking, yes, I tend to agree that we should not block pulling images with the unknown severity. And this is not like, uh, I would not consider this enum as the bug in scanner, you know, mapping the severity, the uh, quantitative severity of a given vulnerability. But rather, uh, what typically happens is that the CVE identifier is reserved, and then it's get, it gets updated. So usually the high severity CVEs are getting very quickly updated. So it's very unlikely to get unknown severities, but there are cases where the scanner can detect it, and it's like, it's, it's not promptly updated. So we might end up with the unknown. So it's, in a sense that you know some companies might be really strict and say all right we don't allow unknown vulnerabilities but for some others they simply say we don't care so maybe we could also think about like a system level configuration which allows you to choose do you want this unknown severity to block the pool or not because this would be i would say the most flexible approach if not i agree it should be treated as as low severity but the truth is, it's you don't really know. It can end up as a high or low. Sometimes vendors do <clears throat> challenge the severity and say, no, it should be higher or it should be lower. I hope it makes sense. But that's a, a very good uh, point to discuss and think how we should do that. In Trivi, for example, we couldn't decide, and that's why we let a user to um, specify whether he wants to display unknown severities or only critical and high and medium, et cetera. Got it, that makes sense. Um, I guess j just speaking for trivia alone, would it be fair to say that the, the, the most severe and most critical vulnerability, vulnerabilities are usually flagged down and so um, the unknown ones would mo more likely tend to be the, the less severe ones? Is that a generalization we can make here? And as a workaround for those who use hardware and trivia now, there is an environment variables which allows you to specify like a filter, which vulnerabilities you want trivia scanner to show. So if you change this, and by default, we show all of that, like a critical, high, medium, low, and unknown. If you remove the unknown vulnerability from the, from the list in your deployment, the, you won't be blocked simply by this uh, case. Got it. 
Does, does anyone, anyone else have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I just think the word unknown is it's open interpretation and sometimes it, you know, it, I think it, it's incumbent on the, the scanner vendor to provide a better um, definition for it. Right? So for me, as a user, if, if it's unknown, then I think it's sort of the failure of the scanner to properly identify the severity of the vulnerability. But you know, it's, I, I can also see the other argument that if something is unknown, then it's basically un it's, a, it's unsafe right? from a security standpoint. That's the best measure to take. Uh, it's just to block and pull. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, ultimately, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit conflicted here. I can see the viewpoint from both sides. I think an unknown vulnerability mm -hmm. really means that someone just couldn't categorize it. Doesn't mean it's important. It might mean that it's maybe also negligible. So the onus is on some, f the folks that create the CVEs to basically say, hey, you know, use the proper scoring mechanism and score this. Um, when the CVE is not scored, or when the scanner can assess the score, uh, in my mind, um, I don't consider that to be critical. And we could actually think about, I'm not saying that's what we should do, and I, I want to hear Daniel's and Alex's opinion is, maybe have a toggle in Harbor that says, or a toggle on a per scanner that says, how do you treat unknowns? Yeah, but it's more like, it's not about scanner, because I would say this is the author of the CVE who has to, or the, or the vendor. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I say. But ultimately, though, like, you know, we could have it on a per scanner policy and say, hey, what do you want to, how do you want to treat unknowns? Right, that, that could be an option that we could offer, right? Mm, yes, and this is what uh, I said. No. In, uh, as a general misunderstanding, the severity here or not is used for our uh, vulnerability check policy. I think there's no relation to the scanner anymore. I, I don't think you can set a different policy against a different uh, scanners. This is the severity here we used to, to, you know, in the interceptor of the vulnerability check, we interpret the unknown as the highest, not the scanner themselves. Uh, yeah, 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 that's how we interpret the policy. That's what I meant, uh, Stephen, that we could actually define how that policy is interpreted. And yeah, doing it per scanner doesn't make sense. You're right. This has to be on a, a global harbor policy. Yeah, yeah, global, yeah. Mm -hmm. it should be global. yeah. My, my bad, I shouldn't have sent per scanner. I confuse things. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking maybe... Yeah, I'm just waiting for the music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but maybe, okay. maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe that's part of the you know security policy per project level, right? When project admin decide I want to block all the critical because different project admin have different uh, idea regarding how they want to uh, tighten the control or the level of security. So maybe if we want anything to be configurable, uh, in my opinion, we should put that in the project level part of the security policy, like. Uh, this is a threshold of the uh, uh, severity and uh, another option uh, in parallel is that, well, I want to uh, enforce this uh, policy and at the same time, I want to block and no, I want to allow and no. I think that makes more sense. It's just my two cents. Yeah. So I agree. Yeah, I think, yeah, that seems a better solution to me. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we have both perspectives. We can think about. Uh, but I, I want to mention, yeah, Daniel's side, uh, Daniel Jones' side is it's it's about uh, you know there is a OPA pro a proposal. Um, we are discussing the uh, in that proposal, I think uh, you can set your own severity policy not just uh, based on severity, you can have based on CVE or something else. Uh, but uh, currently we only need to uh, decide how we interpret the, the unknown, right? We do not need to set support a self-defense policy, right? 
it's not self-defined policy. It's uh, it's just add more attribute to our existing policy. Right, we have a policy say to block a severity at a certain level, and we just add another attribute. To yeah, but uh, for 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 the other normal severity, they all have the you know character order or priority, right? Uh, right. I think only <laughs> not uh, you know. On the on, on certain parties are known how to integrate on unknown. Maybe we can add a, you know more configuration to let the user decide if unknown is the highest or if unknown it can be ignored. Yeah, that can be different per project. I mean, because we allow uh, project yeah. admin to define, right? Yeah. 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 I think we already interpreted. You you can consider that because it's unknown, and also to harbor is unknown. So I think if you wanna, uh make it more flexible to the user, let user decide uh, that's where we should uh, put this attribute in the yeah, project. So, so, so Daniel, looking back to you, like when, when folks in like, you know, from, from your customer interactions on Trivi, when, when customers see unknown, how do they treat it usually? So as I said, we, we let them decide because a 3D can ignore No, no, unknown. but like what, 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 I know you let them decide, but what do they usually choose? Do you have that data? Do you have any data on that? I can I can check what usually like what what is the vulnerability management. Uh, yeah, if there's any tele, if there is any telemetry on that, that'd be very good because we can apply a similar policy here, right? So I know you let them decide, and that's what we could do here. But it'd be good to know like what, what do they usually decide? If 99% of them choose one thing, then maybe that's our key, our sensible default. Yeah. That's uh, good by point. the way, do, do not violate Aqua's uh, internal private data. Only answer if you can. Yeah, and I, I will just share this uh, privately with you, just as a hint for the design. Uh, uh, but yes, I can, I can definitely check because indeed we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. If there are security practitioners that you know already, probably they dealt with unknown issues yeah, until thank, that thank, time. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's follow up here. The next one is. So, sorry, Daniel, these are all security related. So I want to get these out of the way first. Um, we found, I'm not sure if this is a bug or just a one-off, but there is unknown OS. Um, I've come across these personally when I tried to run uh, trivia on just some very standard uh, Docker images that I pulled on Docker Hub. So just running on my Mac. Yeah, uh, I can comment on that quickly. I, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. like baking a PR for this. It's already open a few minutes ago. Uh, indeed, that was oh. the issue in the in the 3D006. So the version that we shipped with hardware to that zero. Unfortunately, we had a bug uh, for scratch images and slim image. Basically, all the images for which we cannot detect the underlying operating system or the package manager, we were returning a non-zero exit code, right? Whereas instead of like a displaying no vulnerabilities with some warning. It's fixed in 3v07. So I had to bump up the version of 3v in the adapter in, in the harbor. So once we merge the PR, a link to this issue, uh, hopefully in 2.01, this gonna, well, not hopefully, it, it must go away, this, this error. Because I know that scratch images are very popular and we also, also advise using as minimal images as possible. So 3v cannot fail here. Got it. Yeah, I think well, let's aim for that in two point zero point one because um, you know a lot of a lot of people have downloaded two point zero and we may tribute the default scanner uh, for Harbor. So I think you know, people are going to use that scanning capability and we're looking forward to it. So I think two point zero point one is a, it's a good goal here. Thank you. Um, next one. This is this came out of a, a complaint or a vulnerability that a, an open source user um, emails about, which is, you know, the, there's, a, there's a test button uh, in a lot of places in the Harbor UI. For example, when you're configuring a uh, replication endpoint, when you're configuring a webhook, um, it might be something else that I'm not uh, it's escaping right now, but essentially the test button is open to port scanning, so that that's a, a security attack. 
I'm not really sure of the extent of, you know, the damage they can do uh, through report scanning, but, you know, we have consulted with internal security teams. We have, inter we have interacted with the user and, you know, it feels like possibly the right thing to do is to get rid of this or make it, uh, you know, like a top uh, selectable through a toggle or something. So, and even though this feature is exposed to the project admin, the, the test test connection, uh, technically, I guess the project admin shouldn't have the ability to, to do this. Um, so I, I just want to see if anyone has any strong opinions on this because, you know, internally we've come, we've pretty much come to the conclusion that um, at the very least, we're going to make it uh, configurable, uh, but most likely we'll just get rid of it. And then if people feel very strongly about it or they want this feature, because um, I think there is utility in, in being able to hit test button to see that your endpoint is being configured correctly. But, you know, out of <clears throat> security is always of the utmost importance to us. So I just want to, oh, and then I guess, yeah, I mean, Daniel, what, what are your thoughts here? That's interesting. Uh, I, I need to like think about it with a, like our security researchers team to see because for me it's I, I somehow can hear what was the intention of someone who opened this or raised this issue. But on the other hand, I see, uh, as you said, lots of benefits of, you know, we are integrating with uh, registry endpoints with uh, scanner adapters. Mm -hmm. Without this feature, we are pretty blind whether it's configured okay or not i'll i'll definitely have a look at, at that and and comment on this what is uh, let me comment? clarify uh, um, sorry let me clarify I, I think i think uh we should add more information in this issue alex we are disabling testing oh you're you're saying we need to disable all test connection but i believe uh the the uh the one that uh we, we receive complaint is only webhook the reason is that the way webhook test a connection is different from others. It's case by case, but the okay. uh, web, it. the one for te testing webhook can be leveraged as a port scanner. But for like uh, replication, uh, registry or a scanner is much, much lower risk because it's essentially calling an HTTP API and uh, waiting for a response. But for webhook, it just try to establish a TCP connection. Yep, so that's, that, that, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so that's the only it's, it, that's the only one that can be used as a port scanner. The rest of them are HTTP calls, so it's only port eighty. So you can't figure out what other scans are, what other ports are open. Yep. All right. Let me revise the issue here. Yep. All right. Thanks yep. for that. Yeah. No problem. Uh, it, don't put the security risk in the issue because someone will sit and start using it as such. So I don't want to elevate the priority of it. Just basically leave the feature as we want to disable testing connection for webhooks. Don't say the why, if possible. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, the last one that I wanted to talk about is um, this one, it's attack retention. So basically, you know, the user, uh, it feels like he's a first time user of the tag retention feature and he had configured some tag reten retention policies. And I guess the, the behavior was not what he expected. Um, and so I double checked that, you know, there was not a bug. It's just, I, I, I can see the, his point that, you know, it's not very intuitive in terms of how it's, the policy is being interpreted. So basically he had connect, he had configured a policy to uh, exclude a certain tag. So master, uh, master of the wildcard and because he had put this in the exclude, um, this was deleted. 
to his surprise because he was interpreting the exclude as, as to mean, you know, these tags should be excluded from the tag retention policy altogether. Um, and so, you know, it, it took me a while to recall this, uh, which, which speaks volume about um, our design here, I think. Basically, you exclude here, you know, the modifier is being applied to, because it's a retention policy. So anything that you configure in the exclude field are going to be deleted. Uh, so it's not exclude from tag retention execution, it's exclude from retention altogether. And so, you know, we had a little back and forth and he understands how it works, but he's not completely convinced that the, the language or the UI is the, you know, the optimal design here. And I think I agree with him. So when you configure something in exclude in tag retention, it feels like it should be omitted from tag retention. So it should be um, retained. So, I mean, only there from tag retention means that there's no possibility that tag retention will delete the image, right? So, I don't know. I, I mean, I definitely see his confusion and I, and I see his point, but, uh, you know, while we were designing this feature, we had always been uh, lots of discussions back and forth. And this was, at the time, it felt like the best way to do it. Uh, there were problems if we did it his way, uh, I'd have to data my notes. But I, I just wanted to bring that to the attention of everyone um, that maybe there's some optimizations that can be made on either the language or the UI somewhere for tag retention. So I don't know if, if uh, Stephen or Daniel has any opinion on this because I think we had a lot, lots of conversations on how to, how we designed this, right? <clears throat> Sorry, I was talking to another other guy on Slack. Um, maybe. Uh, it's okay. You can look at it afterwards. Yeah, uh, I'll add comment or you know. Yeah, Alex, maybe we can uh, take a look offline on okay. this issue. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's all the issues I wanted to discuss for today's call. Uh, is Henry on the line? Uh, Henry, can you maybe you can share a little bit about the progress of the Harvard book? Oh, yeah. Hi. Yes. Hi. Uh, oh, thanks. thanks, Alex. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to give some update about the, the book that we're writing. Uh, we have been uh, invited by a, a publisher uh, in China to write a book uh, in, on Harbor. So because the, there's a huge demand in the community for a reference book. So uh, uh, some, some of our contributors uh, and maintainers uh, uh, took up this task and start writing the content of the book. Um, so right now we not only have uh, people from a uh, contributor from VMware, uh, but also from Tencent Cloud and from uh, NetEase Cloud, and also we have partners and uh, users that are contributing the uh, actual use cases uh, for their uh, for their use on Harbor. So we are collecting all these materials and hope to uh, make it into a book and to be uh, published like uh, in July. Um, so. Uh, because you know there's a CNCF online event in China in July, end of July, and um, so we're thinking that we can, if we can catch up that time frame and release the book at the, around that time frame, there will be uh, more um, people will know it and help help promote the Project Harbor at the time. So right now uh, we are we are still soliciting uh, feedback from our users about uh, Harbor and what they want to know. Uh, for example, some maybe some unsaid secret or maybe some undocumented details. Um, so as long as they are in, users are interested, then they can send us the feedbacks and or emails about what they want to see on the book. Um, right now, so far we have already got some feedback from the users about 
uh, what they want to see, like HA, uh, like the API, and also like the um, a few other things. So I think it's not only interesting to uh, to the authors that are writing the books, but also uh, for our developer that can continue to improve or enhance the, the features of the of the project. So it will be a, a reference book that uh, hopefully will be helpful to the overall community. And I know that many uh, users that are, are highly anticipating this book. Um, so if this is good properly, then we can uh, um, translate it in English later. So um, that's the current status. I hope the community people that if you have any question or you have any thing that you want to see in the book, please feel free to uh, let us know and maybe we can put it uh, into the into the into the books and, and let everybody know. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Hey, thanks, Terry. So is this gonna be based on 2.0, Harvard 2.0? Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention forgot to mention it's based on 2.0. It will cover all the new features that we have, especially the most exciting the uh, the OCI artifacts. So I think I think everybody will be interested in how we can make use of it. So that will be an uh, interesting part of the book too. Yeah, thanks. Very, very nice. This is, this is super exciting. And obviously we can't wait to see it and possibly translate it in other, in other languages as well. Um, yeah. If you guys have the table of content in English, we could definitely take a look at that and maybe suggest some of the additional areas that we might be able to probe based on what you said earlier, Henry. But if it's yeah. Chinese, obviously we can't comment on that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but if it's yeah, in English, we can do that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that Daniel will consider it a stretch goal to write a chapter on trivia in Chinese. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll try to stand out something. <laughs> yeah, we have one chapter about the chapter. <laughs> Is the Daniel uh, Packer interested in uh, writing something <laughs> for us? So you are always welcome we... to learn Chinese. Yeah, uh, if you can learn, 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 learn write in English, then we can help uh, translate. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, all kidding aside, I have asked the school where my kids go uh, multiple years ago, like I think it was five years ago, I seriously asked them, Chinese should be an offered language here, you know, like the, the globalization of software. Uh, I wanted my kids to learn Chinese and they laughed at me and I said like, this is super important. Why should they learn Spanish? But <laughs> you know, it's a conversation for another day. <laughs> oh yeah, interesting. Yeah, okay, I'll send you a, a, a translated version of a TOC. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so uh, that's all I have for today. Does anyone have any questions, comments? All right, so now we can end here. Oh, I think one thing we want to add is that for next Tuesday, we are going to do the voting for Harvard graduation. So oh, we're yeah. setting all the messages and uh, so it, yeah, people can join to do a vote uh, for the graduation voting. Okay, so, can the uh, contributor vote? I mean, I mean the social uh, community vote or only the user can vote? So any, anybody that's using Harbor or has an opinion on Harbor's qualifications for graduation can vote. Now we don't want to put any, like, you know, if someone thinks that Harbor should graduate in CNCF for whatever reason, because they like the functionality, because they're a user, because their organization uses it, uh, because of any other reason, they can vote. It will be a non-binding vote, but it will be a show of support. So when the voting begins on the 26th, uh, we will send an email with instructions on how to vote because you have to actually go and sign up for the CNCF mailing list and then you can vote. Yeah. So do you suggest our maintainer or, or contributor to vote? Um, not, that, not, the, not that 15 people that are contributing into Harbor themselves. Like for example, you, Henry, me, Daniel, uh, Daniel P, Daniel uh, J, Stephen, like we're not gonna vote. It's okay. <laughs> it. it's, it's it's our project, so we're not voting. <laughs> so, uh, but everybody else can vote. Yes. Like, for example, someone else that works at Aqua with Daniel and thinks that Harbor is super important but has not been contributing it can vote. Daniel, not so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah, then we can we can send the news to the community users that so that then ask them to, to vote and express their support. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's exciting one week, folks. One more week and we'll know. Okay, sure. <laughs>
All right, everybody, uh, bye, bye from me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Alex. Bye.